Welcome to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show number 272, with your host, Lauren Gray. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hospitality Marketing, the podcast. I am your host, Lauren Gray, and this is episode two, number 272. So each week, we spend around 20 to 30 minutes sharing the most interesting tools, news, and techniques being used in marketing for the hospitality industry. We also do a quick recap of our weekly live video show this week in hospitality marketing, which also airs every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. So with that, let's get started. And now, today's new resource tool. So our tools for review this week, and I say tools as in plural, are fun ones. Given uh, the fact that we're getting bad news all the time and what have you in our in our daily feeds, I thought we'd kind of lean towards something a little bit more creative and enjoyable and fun and something that we need to be thoughtful of coming into the season for what we are uh, and new and creative ways of doing things. And these two tools I've recently gotten and acquired uh, for their uniqueness and I've started using them and they are highly engaging and lots of fun and a different medium or means, I should say, not necessarily medium, different means of communicating your message. The first is called text video, txtvideo.com. This one's kind of fun. I don't know if you've seen it creep into conversations or in in apps and shows and so forth. Well, there's certainly been in TV shows. Um, And it's been around for a while where it shows a text conversation on a face of a phone. Uh, Also, they will show a text conversation in a transparency while somebody apparently is looking on their phone or whatever to show what it is that they're looking at. Um, Well, this is a fun and creative way of communicating um, your message without it being so advertorial uh, or so typical and traditional, I should say. Uh, What it does allow you to do is to create a fictional conversation between maybe the person that's in the video or just simply having the screen of the phone, which is what the app does both of, uh, in which you can show a dialogue back and forth. So if you were engaging somebody saying, man, you should go to this restaurant or man, you you, want to go grab a burger? Yeah, that's great. And then say, well, I want to go to such and such. And then maybe show an image of it or what have you. And this platform is very fun because it allows you to literally create both sides of the dialogue through its interface and then use it in your ad. Now the uh, current settings of it is it uh, it only lasts about 60 seconds and of course if you can't get your message across in 60 seconds it's a long message. I've had that problem already. So abbreviating it down but having uh, that dialogue people are slightly voyeuristic and they say oh I'm watching somebody else's dialogue. It's kind of fun. You can obviously uh, uh, create customizations to it. You can put the person that you are talking to on it. You can put GIFs on it. You can put uh, memes on it. You can put videos on it. You can put text on it. You can put links on it. Uh, and it all shows up on this fictitious phone screen that you use in your uh, your ad. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, you can also take it, instead of having it on the face of the phone, you can actually put it in as a transparency over video and have maybe somebody that is looking at a phone and this is what they potentially would have been looking at or you can have it as a split screen you have one person on one side versus the others if they're talking to each other and the text goes between the two uh, virtually over the front of it Uh, but it's a fun way of creating a dialogue message in a way that uh, other ads aren't and that is text video txtvideo.com the other one is really very creative uh, and a neat platform, very similar to Powtoons. We've featured Powtoons on the show before as a tool for bo- for animation as well. They uh, they have two aspects, and this is called Wave.Video. Now, Wave.Video, um, there's a lot to this to unpack. Uh, first off, they have a, a partnership with a platform called Animatron, which is allows you to create nice motion cartoons, basically, animations, which is kind of fun. They have a gr- massive library on existing backgrounds and templates and motions and peoples and objects and things that you can just constantly pick from and just drag and drop in say start it here end it there and it makes the motion to make the little thing run across the screen or pop up in the screen or fly through the screen or whatever it is and creates great animation that's the animatron form the wave dot video is fun because it gives you a massive amounts of templates to use for every platform size to spec i don't know about you but one of the time consuming things that i have is Oh, I have to make ads for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. All of them have dimensional sizes. What ad am I putting in Facebook? Well, this one's going to be in Carousel versus this one's going to be on a news feed versus this one's going to be a, a, a header image. Each one has spec size differences, and you have to know what those are. 
Uh, and of course, obviously with images, if you created one for one size, you go to move it to the other size. Now everything is out of place and nothing is correct. And you got to remove and resize everything. It's very time consuming. This platform is a lot of fun, like some of the platforms we featured also. But this one also does the same thing where it literally will change the shape of what you're using to fit the size that you're putting it on. So once you've built it for one, you say, oh yeah, I got to put that on Instagram now. Boom. You choose the Instagram size, which is a template selection, like, oh, I want this one size now. And it resizes, reshapes, but keeps the aspect ratio for everything correct. So everything stays in its proper place. It resizes all the images so that they stay in their proper format size. Very, very handy to create very diverse ads on multiple platforms with the same messaging. So you have some continuity to this if that's what you need. And of course, you can stylize them individually if you need that uniqueness, because obviously messaging in Instagram is way different than messaging in the newsfeed uh, with Facebook, you have less dialogue, more imagery, on and on and on. This does all of that. Plus also comes with a great calendar, which allows you to go over and, and, and it will show you what's going on that day. I know we've, uh, we've talked about this in platforms like Promo Republic or Social Bee, which allow you to see content for that day, images and so forth that are already stylized and templated. You can grab it, customize it to what you need, put your logos or put your messaging on it, your links on it, whatever, and use it. Well, this does it for video which makes it very enjoyable to be able to work with because it gives you another medium to work with. The library selections templates are awesome. It allows you to also put in um, thumbnails for your emails that will be autoplay for videos if that's what you'd like. It allows it to put it embed into the window uh, to websites as well. Uh, it allows it to host it as well. Um, it does a lot of very cool stuff and there's a great deal with that on AppSumo right now that um, allows you to go over and get it for a very remarkable price, even their business function, which is more, even more robust and more of a diverse. And they said it also comes with Animatron as a part of the offer, which makes it especially handy and nice. Um, and so definitely well worth the, the look at wave.video. So our two tools today is TextVideo, TXTVideo.com, and wave.video. And that is our tools for the week. Now, for this week's hospitality technique, so our technique obviously is tied to our tools and our technis, technique this week is getting creative with your content, getting beyond the factual. Now I say this in contradiction to a slight degree of uh, something that I've been advocating and soapboxing and waving my hand and, and what have you as to uh, our messaging turning from sales and conversion and prom self-promotion as rates and dates and products and this is who we are and this is what we have to answering what our guests need. Now, our first stages, we, we I said there were four components to this. The first was the safety factor, a little bit following Maslow's hierarchy. Let's first establish what we're doing for safety. Uh, I, I've talked at great lengths about creating a video that demonstrates and shows what we're doing for safety to show the new protocols when people enter into our hotels or into our restaurants saying this is what we have to do based on our municipality, municipality or our branding, whatever. Uh, we have plexiglass screens. This is our hand sanitizer. This is keyless entry. Whatever the protocols are, this is how we handle breakfasts now. Rather than the buffet, we have boxes and you come down and you pick yourself. Whatever it is, that was the first one. The second then was to talk about what was eminent around the hotel or restaurant, other places to dine, what those restrictions are, were they delivery and pickup only, were there's internal seating, was there a certain limitation to hours, what were their menu selections, if it was reduced menu, all that information so that people, when they did come with you, and for whatever reason they had to be with you, whether it was uh, because they had to or because they, they, they chose to, allowing them to understand the full scope of what was eminently available around you in proximity. The third level was then to begin to share what was able to be done while they were with you. So if they were staying with you for either one of those reasons, we know drive market and what have you, is also allowing them to understand, say for instance, the museum partially open but required reservations only. Or that this uh, end area was open but it was only during certain hours of operation. Sharing that information as well. And then the fourth, of course, was beginning to solicit people as to a reason to come to and stay with you because of the things that were available immediately around you. Maybe there was an apple orchard that had a special event or there was wine country traveling or, or there was uh, other things to find and discover within the market uh, that were fun to do. So you give them the incentive to come with you. But if you notice, the whole theme of all four of those things were about providing answers to questions and information for usage. 
So I was a very big and still a huge advocate of sharing information, of answers and information that our guests need to make purchase decisions. It's not about our rates and dates. That's information to be shared as well. But it's more about providing as broad of a spectrum of content as we can so that people have an informed means to make a decision. Our conversation today is a little bit of an expansion beyond that. Ours is, why not begin to create some sort of positivity or uniqueness to our message, creativity to our content, to solicit the idea that it would be enjoyable. We've dealt with factual, we've dealt with functional, we've dealt with mandatory, we've dealt with compliance, we've dealt with all these hard-edged things. What about being creative and fun? A little bit like to the tools we talked about earlier with text video and wave video or textvideo.com and wave video is being creative with it. Uh, animation. It's whimsical. I just did one with wave.video that was highlighting Halloween. Just fun, spooky stuff. Dropping down spiders and people turning into vampires and spooky people running across the stage going, hey, where are you staying? Stay with us for Halloween. You know, fun little things that aren't about what's amendmentally available, what are we, you know, what our protocols are, so forth, but just the solicitation of if there is a need, why you're looking to be in our area. Let's make something of a, of a fun thing to tell you about. Um, same too with text video. Dialoguing back and forth of like, wow, you know, if you're craving a burger, we got the greatest burger place in our area. And if you're traveling through, it is well worth getting off the road for. Or if you're in staying with us, which we hope you do, it's well worth going to. Or if you're in the area for another reason, it's well worth coming to. But making it fun. Making it enjoyable, visually engaging by doing this little text back and forth. Hey, you want a burger? Yeah, I want a burger. Where do you want to go? I don't know, but a super cool place. It makes it a fun dialogue. We're going, wow, I hadn't thought. That that sounds like a pretty cool place. Where is that? And of course, the links and the information are there for them to find. So being, being creative with your content is, especially with the times that we're in, with the election uprising and, and of course, with COVID on the resurgence and so forth, all the things and news that you just want to shut it off if you, if you don't want to just deal with it that day. This is a fun way of soliciting, hey, if you're safe, if you need to travel, if you want to travel, if there's a purpose for the travel, with the holidays coming up and all these other things that we talked about where you, you want to visit family, but you don't want to necessarily stay with them this time because you don't want that density of people for a long period of time. It's okay to sit down with dinner maybe outside, but we're all not going to stay in the house with grandma this year. I want to stay at a hotel just down the road and or I'm going to do shopping. And we've already been told that uh, it's better to shop at a store that has it in stock in the store. So you buy it online, but come by and pick it up. Well, not everybody lives by those stores. So maybe those in the rural areas or areas that don't have the stores in their market travel to a market that has those stores as they order the items, stay at your hotel and they go out shopping, grab all their stuff and bring it back. And then they go home afterwards and you've turned into a facilitator of that opportunity for them. Well, those are all fun things. Those are all exciting things to talk about. It's like, do your shopping with us. And maybe even solicit and reach out to some stores in your market and say, what can you offer me that I can offer my guests if I share this information with them? I can talk to my own audience on your behalf that says if they stay with us, they can come to your store. And because they stayed with us, they get this. Especially the mom and pop places, the little places, especially the custom and creative places that, you know, custom jewelry that they only have one of those necklaces on display because that's the only one that they've made like that. It's a one of a kind. Well, having them solicit that type of stuff and say, if somebody stays at your hotel and comes shop with us, let's show them what we have in the store. They can purchase it and then come by the store and pick it up. It saves them shipping costs maybe saves you as a as the as the purchaser shipping costs because they may have to pass that on to you and secondly with what we already know is going to be an overwhelming demand for delivery services and we already been told to expect delays this circumnavigates that and say come to the store and pick it up we'll take you like it we'll take it off the shelf we'll put it in a box you come by if you haven't already paid us online if they don't have that means you can pay us when we get here. We'll bring it out to your car. Or you can walk in with a mask on, pick it up and leave without having to engage with all these other people that might be in the store. So lots of creative content ways of doing stuff. As we go into the holiday season, this is like no other holiday season, as we talked about in our previous podcast and live show, that this is unique. So getting creative with your content and just going beyond the factual information is what we have to transition to in for the holiday season. And that, my friends, is the technique of the week.
Now, this week's hospitality news that you should know. So new and sh- news and show review. We had some one point. Again, it, it size of numbers of co- uh, co-hosts don't always matter as it is the quality of the content. With us this week was Adele Gutman from uh, Aspire Reputation Marketing, Stuart Butler with Fuel Travel, Tim Peter with Tim Peter & Associates, and Everest St. Ange with Flip2. It was fun to have Tim back. We haven't had Tim for a few weeks. He's been busy as we like to joke with him uh, in the Illuminati of the hospitality arm. Uh, he was off doing business stuff, and he wasn't able to join us on a few Fridays. And now he was back for a while, which was great. Um, we got back into a what we thought was going to be a tour de force, where uh, Stuart was going to contend with Tim. Tim often said that content is king, and Stuart was going to say that from his recent podcast that they contest that content is king. Well, it didn't turn out to the bitter blows that we thought it was. We thought it would be a fun back and forth bantam, but it turns out that Stuart was only trying to redefine a little bit of what Tim was saying and saying that content is king as equal reigning to queen uh, when it comes to to all the, uh, the to the ability to communicate and, and deal with and work with and data and everything else. That content has its value not as a leader, but as a co-leader. Uh, that content is, is critically important, but... It isn't the de facto only source. So it was, a, it was a, an agreed upon, agree not to disagree, but actually agreed to agree. Uh, it was a fun reaffirmation as to the value of content, the usages of content, and how important content is now. And more so now than ever, just as we brought up with our, our technique of the week and tools. We also talked about creating great team building culture. This was led a little bit by Adele, shared by everyone as to uh, the importance of creating a positive culture, a positive environment, um, especially now with the diminished staffing you may be having through the reduction of business. This is a chance to rebuild your building blocks because you have fewer people to influence. Obviously, the people you've kept were your core drivers, your key leaders, the, the, the ones that you find to be the most important out of all. So they probably already have bought into the culture that you had. So refining it even more to being positive and affirmational and and driven to be better than they have been will be easier to convince them so that as you begin to grow from the current business level to larger business level as time goes on, hopefully, as you bring back people and or hire other people, they're being introduced into a positive, forward-thinking culture that has been amplified by being very much about success and positivity and guest centric and all the things that you always wanted that maybe before when you had larger teams and larger staff and a variety of distractions going on, you may not have had the opportunity to to truly focus on. Well, now given circumstances, this is an excellent time to make that focus. So we had a great conversation about it and the logistics associated with it. This wasn't hypothetical pie in the sky, cotton candy stuff. This was really, this is how you do it. And we had a great discussion about that. So anyway, uh, news item that I wanted to bring up was an excellent article from a very dear friend of mine, Max Sarkoff. Um, uh, Max started Habs, which turned into Next Guest. He is an uh, adjunct professor at NYU. Uh, great article of how to keep your direct guests and steer traveler booking motivations away from the OTAs. Unfortunately, uh, he took a bad article and made it good. Um, he took a re- reference by Expedia Group, which was poorly sampled, self-serving, but it made some strong points that he wanted to emphasize. And that was, there's going to be too many people in our industry uh, hotel marketers and hoteliers in general, they're going to go back and offer up inventory to the OTAs because they themselves can't do their own marketing and or don't see it being able to be done for them and are just going to go back and offer inventory to OTAs, much like they did in 01, much like they did one for SARS, MERS, Zika, H1N1, all that stuff. Okay. Um, they panic too easy. And this is the time to keep and capture your own voice and market segment. Um, not to just surrender to OTAs. Now, OTAs are battling a different front, and that is during this period of downturn, and they entered into this downturn with less funding and some confusion and a lot of ambiguity as to their leaderships. Um, they're going to come out of it you know, in, a, in some positive aspects because they are going to have people that are, like I said, are, are, are going to just hand them inventory and not do their own marketing, what have you. But they're fighting uh, the 2,000 million pound gorilla, which is Google. Google has created a massive dominance in market. 
and they are um, in, the, in the shadow of it now. They have lost a lot of their voice on that very same platform. Google has taken a lot of the OTA's voice and become a more of the OTA than it was prior to all of this. So the OTA is going to be fighting getting our attention as hoteliers to service stuff, but also they're going to be fighting Google. Um, some of the numbers that Max referred to in the study were interesting. He said uh, motivations include, okay, so he says, um, a recent study conducted by Expedia Group claimed travelers are 50% more likely to book at a hotel via an OTA than before the pandemic because based on best nightly rate, best room, uh, able to, build, to compare properties in one location. Other motivations include uh, earning reward points, one-stop shopping, direct promotions, buying a bundled offer, such as flights, hotels, what have you, in a single transaction. Now, again, sample size was too small, definitely self-serving, but it did bring a lot of these points together that we are missing the boat on a lot of that stuff. We don't do a good job on our own doing those things for ourselves, let alone the hoteliers and the marketers are going to just say, I don't, I'm just going to give it to the OTA and let them do it for us. So obviously we need to focus on those things and we need to expand our ability to do them for us. I know it's self-serving because that's what I do for hotels, but I, even if you don't use me, making sure you do it for yourself is, is, is more so important than at any other time. So taking the opportunity to redefine your marketing, reconverge or to converge if you haven't your revenue management strategies with your marketing strategies with your sales strategies with your operational goals of fulfillment with your accounting methodologies and your hr training and team building uh focus are all key elements of the things that go together so that is our news and show review so remember you can find us on Google Play, Apple, iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, TuneIn, Podcasts. The list goes on. 39 and counting to be exact. We're even on Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and Siri. Just ask to play the Hospitality Marketing Podcast. And no matter which one you may use, if you like the show, please rate us and leave us a comment that will help others find our content. And it gives us great feedback as to what you'd like to listen to, hear more about, and we're open to all suggestions as well and critiques. Also, if this is your first time hearing us, you can subscribe, of course, to our show on any of those 39 platforms as well. For an archive of all previous podcasts, you can go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash podcasts. That's with an S. And don't forget our live video talk show that you can join and participate in every Friday at 1130 Eastern U.S. time called This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the live show. Simply go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live. There you can see episode 260, 272, which we just finished as well, the one I just mentioned. And of course, at the podcast platform, same thing, show number 272. So again, as always, thank you for the privilege of your time. And we look forward to talking to you next week. You have been listening to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show 272 brought to you by Hospitality Digital Marketing in support of the HSMAI, the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association International All Rights Reserved Copyright 2020.